Hello, everyone. Susan Gerbic here from Psychics Explained. So it's time. I know, I know. I've been hoping to get this released for a very long time, but um, a lot of things have happened in my life in the last few months, and I really didn't know what to do, what I was going to do with this footage. So back in, <clears throat> gosh, it's almost been a year now, I was trying to find a, a psychic, a psychic medium for a potential investigation that would be a bigger deal. So I was looking for somebody who's tele, telegenic, you know, somebody who looked good on film. I was looking for a medium. I was hoping that would hot read um, somebody to explore further. And I've been looking around at a lot of different ones and I tested this one and it's nobody you would have heard of before. Her name is Lady Phyllis. And she is um, a, works as a psychic medium. And she's endorsed by Thomas John. And I'll show you that in a second. So I was looking around to see what we were going to do with her. I didn't know if I'd do something further with her. Um, and so I've been holding on to this footage for uh, over a year now. Not sure. So it's it's time to release it. I've got plenty of other footage from other places. I don't think I'll be doing anything with Lady Phyllis. It's obvious that she's cold reading people. And the reason why I thought she might be hot reading is because she's a, a student of Thomas John. Now, Thomas John hot reads, almost entirely hot reads. And that's been documented zillions of times on my channel and in my uh, writings that he is simply looking up people's information and repeating it back to them as if he has some sort of spiritual knowledge or something. Okay, well, that's not disputed. Um, it's You can't even argue with that in any way. I mean, if you do, you're obviously not paying attention. You're just making excuses. So, so I set this thing up called Operation Dill Pickle. Remember, I don't name these. Mark Edward has always named them. So Operation Dill Pickle was kind of an exploratory way of trying to find who was going to be the next psychic that I was really kind of focusing on. I've been very interested in the last, oh, maybe last year in this world of what happens kind of in the underground. It's not exactly underground, but in these more private readings where there's 20, 300, just small groups of people, mostly all women who are getting readings over Zoom. And of course, it doesn't all have to be over Zoom. It's the same principles that are being applied from Scotland to, you know, wherever, um, New Zealand, when these small readings of mostly women and they are um, trying to, it's an intimate kind of event where you go regularly and you see the same people over and over. All right. So what I'm going to show you today is a reading of me. And it's, gosh, 20 minutes long, I think, 15, 17 minutes long. I'll, I'll cut and intersperse and explain it as we go. So you don't have to just do the whole 17 minutes at once because it, it's difficult. Um, and I want to kind of explain what I was doing. So let me show you this endorsement first by Thomas John. And then let's come back and we'll I'll break it down a little bit more of what I'm doing. Now, it's a three-hour video of multiple readings by multiple of multiple women. I think there's a man in there, but it, it's, I'm, I'm not releasing them in this video. Hopefully I'll release them in future upcoming videos and articles. But in this moment, you're going to see me being read. I'm the last person to be read for the night and I'll explain in a minute. So let me show you what's going on with Thomas John and why I picked Lady Phyllis. This is a minute and 38 seconds long. Hey guys, it's Thomas John here from Seatbelt Psychic and the Thomas John Experience. Um, I wanted to do a video for you guys. I've done a video about this person before, but I thought I would do another video about this person. And um, many, many, many of you have asked me, do I know a great medium? Because, you know, often I'm busy and overbooked and I've got so many clients. And a lot of you have said, hey, do you know anyone that you can recommend? I always am careful about that because I really, in order to recommend somebody, I have to feel that they have integrity and that they do really amazing work and that they are an evidential quality medium. I can't just recommend any random person. 
So a person that I would recommend to you to try out, who's a wonderful medium, former student of mine, um, good friend of mine, and somebody who I think does really, really exceptional work, is Lady Phyllis. Okay, so you can go over to ladyphyllis.com and book a reading with her. She is a really good, high-quality medium. So if you are looking for um, somebody like that, you know, somebody, you know, I would highly recommend Lady Phyllis. Lady Phyllis, great medium, um, great, you know, great intuitive, um, great energy about her, great teacher. Ladyphyllis.com. Um, and you can go over and make sure you tell her when you book with me that you were referred by me. Um, and you should check her out. Lady Phyllis, um, great medium. So if you're looking for a medium, that's somebody to check out. Bye for now. Okay, fascinating, right? So uh, this is a medium that was trained by Thomas John, which is why we suspected maybe she was a hot reader because that's what he does. But every psychic that we have looked into that is trained by Thomas John has been a cold reader. I really don't think that Thomas John gives the real tricks that he uses to his students because I don't think that they would go for it. To be honest with you, I really don't think that um, these people, I believe, think they're doing, they're helping. And I believe that they think that they really are communicating with the dead to some extent. They probably think they might have to cheat a little bit. You know, the ends justify the means and sometimes they're not always spot on. And so they might need to do some cold reading <clears throat> and so on. A lot of these people, I don't think they realize they're cold reading. So... I don't think ethically most of these people would go for hot reading, especially the way Thomas John does it. So I, I yet have yet not found somebody who hot reads. Um, interesting. Some of the things he says, um, he, uh, he says, make sure you let her know I referred you. Now, why, why would he, he do that? Well, probably because he's, is it possible he's getting a cut out of any cells that Lady Phyllis gets? I don't know. Uh, maybe he just wants to make sure she, you know, helps endorse him, further promotes him. Um, I don't know. But it just seems like, okay, cool. So what are you getting out of this, Thomas John? Because I know you're getting something out of this. Um, also interesting is that he fully researched her. So what does that mean? He's tested her. He's researched her. She's absolutely credible and she's ethical and, and so on. Well, that's why I wanted to check out. I wanted to see what was going on. Now, Lady Phyllis's website does say for entertainment only, I think in very small print, which is just one of those disclaimers people are trying to do to get past the, um, um, you know, the actual harm. You know, they want to be able to say that. But when you watch this video of my reading and future videos that I hope to release for, of Lady Phyllis, I want you to think, is this something she thinks, is this like, yeah, yeah, it's just a joke. We're just pretending and it's entertainment only because I don't think so. Also, by not going after Thomas John directly with, oh my gosh, how many times can I do a video on Thomas John or an article on Thomas John or a sting on Thomas John? I've caught him so many times um, that um, this is a way of still going after him but not directly because he's endorsing her. So since he's trained her and he's supposed to be a psychic medium and he's endorsed her and he said he's endorsed her and he's researched her and all that, then when we find that she is just cold reading and she's absolutely, well, you'll see. Um, then that's saying, what kind of skills do you have, Thomas John? What, what kind of psychic are you? And also it says to Lady Phyllis, who will she thinks she's real, that she's really contacting dead people. So what does it say about her when, um, and what does it say about her skills as a psychic when she's endorsing this hot reading grief vampire, Thomas John? All right. So <laughs> let me set this up for you really briefly. Um, I'm not going to show you three hours of video, but I, there, this is a three hour reading and we've done lots of um, watching of Lady Phyllis over the last year, year and a half. And, and this is the first video I'm releasing on her. First time I've, I'm talking about her at all. So 
if you're if you're interested, there should be more videos coming out. I wanted to see if she hot read. So I put together this sting called Operation Dill Pickle. And I left hot reading bait. And I'm not going to get into that right now. I will show that on a completely different video. And she doesn't take it, right? So I'm here. I am watching. And other people are watching as well because I'm live streaming the video to a group of people who are friends of mine. And, you know, if this is something you want to be interested in, possibly we can include you in it. One of them is Kenny Biddle. Um, and some other people who I'm not going to name at the moment, they're watching this live as it's happening on a private group where I'm live streaming it. And <laughs> I'm last and I'm punch, punch drunk at this time by this time. So like I said, it's been three hours. I'm exhausted watching what's going on. And <laughs> I can't be seen. Now, as far as I know, Lady Phyllis doesn't know who I am. Well, she didn't at the time. And, <laughs> but the person who's helping her, who's assisting her with her Zoom is Tracy. And Tracy used to work for Thomas John. And she absolutely knows 100% who I am. Now, there's been a break between Tracy and Thomas John. I don't know what it is. I just know they're lo no longer Facebook friends and she wants nothing to do with him. But um, they are estranged for whatever reason. If somebody knows the details, please let me know. Um, maybe she figured out he was hot reading. I don't know. But Tracy is on this call. She is in the Zoom room. I know she's in the Zoom room. And I could not come up with a disguise. And let me tell you, I tried many different ones that I felt comfortable with using that Tracy wouldn't be able to identify me. And actually, I'm not the most important part of this whole um, series in Operation Dill Pickle. I had somebody else who was a plant who was the actual focus. So I'm at the very end of this. And as I said, I can't be identified. I can't turn my, my video screen on because I know Tracy will figure it out. And my voice is distinctive. People tell me that all the time. They you know, can hear me across the across the um, store and they'll say, oh my gosh, I think that's Susan Gerbic. And it doesn't matter what I look like, they always can recognize my voice, which is understandable. So I used uh, for this a um, um, mouth uh, guard that keeps your teeth from touching so that you can use like to keep your teeth from, um, you know, rubbing together, grinding in your sleep. So that's what I'm using. And that's why my voice is different. And my mom's from the South. And so I just took on a Southern accent, which is horrible. I apologize to my Southern family and friends, but that's what I did. At this point, I'm just almost just joking at this point. So Lady Phyllis always says she needs a photograph or she needs to be able to see you to be able to um, read your dead person's. So I just played it off that my screen wouldn't open. I couldn't figure out how to make the video work. And she said at first, I'm not sure that's going to work. And then she tests me out a little bit and boom, she says, I gotcha. I, I've got it. So um, <laughs> you'll see that in the video. Um, while this is happening, I can read the chat that's going on with the people who are watching it, Kenny Biddle and others, and they're roaring with laughter because they cannot believe that I'm getting away with this. And they're they're saying any moment now, they're going to know it's Susan Gerbic and they're going to throw her off here because it's so obvious that I'm I'm <laughs> I who I am because they can recognize my voice even with the Southern accent and the bite guard on. All right. So I've shown this video to almost zero people and um <laughs> i'll break in here every so often because you know why not so <laughs> my name is joanne i have a lot of different aliases and um Thank i have a lot know. of different um i have a lot of different uh personas and different groups we have many different ones that we we use that have been around for years and years and we thought possibly if she was going to hot read the other person that i brought into this group into this um operation um that maybe she would hot read me as well well 
there's all sorts of information on Joanne's uh, Facebook page uh, that she could have found lots of dead family members that, of course, don't exist, that she would have been able to get information for. And we wanted to see if she would take that. And she does not bite on that. So again, I don't think this woman is hot reading in the traditional sense of hot reading, though I will explain that again at another time. So let's look at the beginning of this. And I, as I said, I'll break in every so often. And thank you guys for being here with me. I've been wanting to do this for so long and I just have not been able to get myself to do this. And um, I'd appreciate it if you'd like, share um, this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell for alerts whenever you whenever I upload a new video. Uh, please comment. I love to see your comments. So please, please do so. So let's get started. Operation Dill Pickle with the reading of Joanne, which is, oh, it's sorry, it's 25 minutes long. <laughs> sorry, this will be a little bit, I'm sorry, this will be a long video. I don't, I don't, I like to leave everything in because I don't want to pretend I'm hiding something. So this is Lady Phyllis. All right, Joanne, we're going to read you next. Is there any way that we can get your, your face too? She said she doesn't have a video. Okay. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Can she unmute? She has Hi. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Oh, oh, wonderful that we're here. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me see what I get. Um, so I told you about, I usually, when I look at people, I can see who's with them. Oh, but I, I'm so I, sorry. I no, don't know. Okay. It happens. And it's just not, it's just not working. I just, I have so much, no. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll try. I am getting a male beside you. So I'm going to ask, have you lost a, a spouse or a brother? Uh, both. Okay, well, there we go. So it's working. So I'm going to start with the spouse, and I'm getting a G name like Jean George, um, or it could G, G's could be J or G, like James. Do it, did your brother or your spouse have any of those initials in their names? Um, well, yeah, uh, we call Jimmy my brother, which is Jimmy. Jimmy, okay, and your husband? Well, it, no. Okay, don't tell me his name. If it's not a G or a J, we're going to let him do the work. Okay, so the J is coming forward first. So this is your brother, Jimmy. And um, were you close with your brother, Jimmy? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as a young man? No. Well, I thought he was young. So. Okay. But like I, the way he's presenting to me is like a 25 or a 30 year old. So to me, let's, <laughs> but he was older than that when he passed. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, 50, 53, okay. I think. Yeah. He, he's presenting like the way he was probably in his twenties or thirties. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, was he, was he a really good looking guy? He thought so. Yeah, because he's he's kind of showing off that he's he's like he's back in his good looks and he's you know he's feeling pretty frisky and he's feeling great. Um, did he live far from you? Um, no. Well, sometimes when he was in the military, he wasn't nearby. Yeah, that was my next thing. I was going to ask if he was in the navy because I am seeing a navy uniform. Is there someone with a navy uniform? Um, my hmm well i had an uncle okay i yeah uh but i didn't know him. Doesn't want to give up that george there is somebody with a, a name like george or gerard or like that hard just sound um can you think of anybody like that yeah um no. If not, we'll just we'll just leave that for later. But so your uncle is here also. That's the navy uniform. Oh, oh. but your, your brother was in the military, yeah. and um, yeah, and um, because what I'm getting is, will you? Did you see him before he passed? Yeah, my my brother or my uncle. Your brother, your brother. You were with him when he passed, or you were you had no, 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 no. He was no, he was he was with his wife. He was with his wife, yeah, but did yeah. you see him before he passed? Were you in the? Did you go to the hospital before he passed? No, no, no. He was no, he was living far away. 
That's what I'm talking about. At that because time, yeah. At that time, he's telling me you were too far to see him in the end. That makes sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That makes okay. Sense. So, yeah, he wants you, and you felt bad about it? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he wants you to let that go. He wants you to remember the good times. He says, don't let my life sink down to that one minute or that okay. one month that you didn't see me. Okay. You know, think about all the good times we had. Yeah. Now, did he, was he a rock, did he like rock music or heavy metal or something? Uh, no. No. Because... Well, because he's enjoying music and it's not classical. I'll tell you that, you know, it's, it sounds like loud music. So I, you know, he, he comes across that he's, he's living his best life now, even if he's not in, in our opinion, living. Do you right. understand that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And um, I want to say he got very sick at the end. He was very ill. Correct. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he doesn't want you to feel bad that you didn't get to see him before he passed. Yeah, it was sudden. It was sudden. I didn't have a chance to get there. No. Yeah. And and I feel like that's a big regret for you. And he says, you know, he wants you to know that he loves you and, and you didn't need that. Like no. you had a bigger relationship than that. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I want to go to your husband now. Okay. <laughs> I do not have a brother who has died. I do not have a sibling that's been in the military. I do not have a James or a John or a George or a Gerald or a hard J name in my family that I know of. I mean, there's probably some James or Johns and who knows what, but then so what else? I mean, why pick J? That's one of the most common names that these psychics will use whenever they throw it out. So this is cold reading, you guys. This is cold reading. And you'll see as she goes along, she does a lot of, yeah, that's what he says. Oh, that's how he says. That's what he's telling me. After I've already made the statement that I acknowledge it. So this is very common for cold readers. And it makes it sound like they know what they're doing because she does it with confidence. This woman is probably done thousands of readings. So she knows what she's doing and as far as this uh, word play. And it seems very convincing to people who are um, uh, believers in psychics. They say this all the time that they, uh, the woman was very specific and the um, she knew things that nobody else could know. But if you were to listen to the video or the recording, which is so hard to do because people don't want to share them because they say it's private or most of the time they say, I didn't make a recording, but I took notes. Or I just remember and have a really good memory. Really? Come on now. Um, because if, even if it's been a couple minutes later, like you guys listening to this, you just watched it. Could you really remember what was said clearly and in the order and exactly the way she says it? Because it's kind of hard to kind of hard to do. I mean, I've seen this a bunch of times, but um, you know, how old was it that she said he was? She said he was 30 or so, you know. And I said, you know, I just joked around and said, no, he was in his he's 53. Now I want you to know I am making this up as I go along. I have no plan. I have zero plan. <laughs> I am We've already done, I'm the last reading of this three hours. As I said, I'm kind of punchy drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm not drinking. But I mean, I'm kind of like just silly at this point because I've, I'm just tired. And <laughs> I'm getting my reading finally. And I want to see what she says. My goal is to see, is she ethical? Because that's one of the things that Thomas John says. And I'll get to that in a few minutes. So let me underline that so I can remember to get to that whenever we get to the ethical part of this. So I do not have a brother who has died. I do not have any of the information she's giving right now. So every time she says something, I'm just agreeing or sort of agreeing or 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 whatever. And you see how she says, oh, yeah, well, then this will work because I'm, I found your brother right away. And she's also got my uncle who was in the Navy. I, I think all my uncles were in the army. I'm trying to think. And they're not uncles that I really like knew because I'm the youngest child of um, of older parents. 
So I don't know if there was anybody in the Navy that was an uncle, but you know, whatever she, maybe she knows he's here because she saw a military uniform, right? <laughs> I find this fascinating. I don't know if you guys picked up on this is that they can present themselves at any age they want to be or at any way he's presenting himself. He's presenting himself as a very good looking man. What does that mean? Um, he's presenting himself as a 30 year old. Could he present himself as an infant? Could he present himself as a nine-year-old? What, what does that actually mean? It means that the psychic has an out for everything. They can say whatever they want to say, and it's going to just give them an out. Um, I'm the one who mentioned the military. I said she asked, "Was I living? Was I close to my brother?" I think she did. She say I was like close to the brother, or do we live close together? See, I've already forgotten. You guys tell me in the comments. I've forgotten. I don't want to go back and look. But Mark Edward used to say this all the time. And um, it happens to Mark in Operation Pizza Roll with Thomas John, the one that hit the New York Times, that um, Thomas John said, you know, were you close? He asked Mark, was he close to his dad? And that means two different things. Were you close, like as in having a close relationship and at what period of time are we talking about? Because you might've been close as a child and not as an adult, or maybe there was a period of time you were not close that was, you know, or does it mean distance? Like, do you live close? Do you live within the same proximity, the same zip code, the same state, the same part of the country? What does it mean? Well, when they throw out statements like that, were you close to your brother? Then it's up to the motivated sitter, that would be me, who's motivated to get a really good reading, it's up to me to decide how I'm going to answer that question. And whatever the psychic says, whatever I respond, the psychic's going to go with it. So if I was to say something was emotionally, yes, my brother and I were very close. Um, I was at his wedding. I was, you know, um, I was at the birth of his first child. Or no, we've never been close. Or we haven't been close lately because we've had an estrangement and, you know, there was an argument. She'll just go with whatever I say. If I say distance, okay. So I can't quite remember if she said, do you live near each other or were you close to each other? And then again, what is close as far as distance is um, if you have somebody that lives in the same town, yeah, that's close. If they live, I guess, if they live um, next door to you, that's very close. If they live in the same time zone as you, but it's an hour or two flight, that could be close. It just depends. You know, if your rest of your family members live on the other coast and you have a family member that lives a five hour drive away, then they are your close family compared to the ones that are on the other complete coast that's a five hour flight. See what I'm saying? So again, it's not specific. So um, th this thing on and on, don't feel bad about it. Let it go. Um, I know you feel bad about not being there with him at the end. All those were questions. She's asking me, were you here? Were you with him? Did you see him before he died? Were you in the hospital with him? All those things, they're just generalities and they're not um, any kind of specifics. And she's asking me, right? She's not stating. She hasn't said his wife's name. She hasn't said uh, my uncle's name. Wouldn't that be helpful? I should have said, which uncle? <laughs> that would have pissed her off. But, you know, I wanted to see where she'd go with this. Don't uh, feel bad about it. Remember the good times. Well, look, lady, I am not so worried about my brother who didn't exist, okay? So, um, uh, music. Does he like rock and roll music or heavy metal? Well, she's making an assumption based on how old I seem to be and how old what generation this person was. Now, if we were talking about, I don't know if she's channeling somebody from uh, the 1920s. Do you think she'd be talking about heavy metal or, uh, <laughs> you know, hard rock? No, of course not. She's talking about somebody who's out of a generation that would have had uh, possibly, it's a male, possibly have loved hard rock or heavy metal, which is kind of odd, but okay, no, I guess it's not that odd. It's not classical for sure. Like there's no other genres besides hard rock, um, classical, or heavy metal. 
you know, never heard of jazz or anything like that, or, you know, um, flute music or something like that. <laughs> okay, so got sick at the very end. So he got sick at the very end. No kidding, he's dead. Either he was, <laughs> either there was, um, you know, something sudden, um, or he was sick at the very end. There's not a lot of outs there. There's a couple more, but then even you, even if, even if he had um, an accident like at work or a car accident, or if he ended his own, um, he took his own um, life, then you could, I guess a psychic could say he was still sick and he was sick at the end and you just didn't know it. And the car accident ended it sooner. But if he had lived a little longer, it would have come out that he was very sick. I mean, it's just vague, right? I'm glad you're sticking with me, you guys. Okay, let's move over to my husband who's died that, of course, I don't have. Yes, my partner, Mark Edward, died two months ago. And this was recorded over a year ago, but we, he was not my husband. And at no point was was he, no. So she's alluding to a physical husband, a physical, a real husband. Because I said, my husband, I mentioned it earlier. I said um, that neither, the, my brother, Jimmy, who I made up, um, and she said, could it be your husband? And I said, uh, that has a J name. And I said, no, 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 no. Okay. I hope you guys are liking my accent. It sounds just like me, doesn't it? It really does. I I don't know why she can't pick up on it. But apparently she wasn't able to pick up on it because she ain't psychic. Okay, let's go on. Let's see what she has to say about my... my okay, good, 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 good. Did your husband, was he ill for a long time? No, no, it was very quick. It was very quick, but he was ill, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got diagnosed, and it was because he's telling me he was very ill. Well, yeah, yeah, at the end, very, yeah, yeah very ill. Um, and um, to him, he says it felt like a long time. Like, I, I want to say, did he go through tons of testing and diagnostics? No, that was, no, no, because he's telling me what he's saying is that he suffered with all the prodding and the poke he didn't like that part of it do you understand that oh yeah yeah or, yeah and for him that was torture oh yes yeah, for us both right so for me it feels like he was sick for a long time the way he's carrying on that they that whatever they did to him he didn't like it do you understand that yeah, yeah. that it was it was very um invasive or painful or he just didn't like it this was a guy who didn't like to be sick no. not that anybody likes to be sick but he really did he never have a sick day in his life oh he was sick big baby sometimes yes he was sick oh he doesn't like that but yeah. but he's saying that he he didn't do well being sick like it was not it was terrible for him you want yeah. that? yeah 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 he didn't uh, like being sick, no. Yeah. And um, was his liver involved? No. Because no. I'm getting the abdomen area, and I see, like, his skin is turning yellow. So um, no. did something happen to him towards the end from the medication? Did, did... No, not, no, not that I know of. No. Okay. Are you seeing something that happened with the medication? I'm seeing that he wasn't reacting well to the medication, that it was making him ill. You remember the, the young lady before said the chemo kills her father. I'm mm -hmm. feeling like whatever treatments they were doing to him was very hard on him. No, no not, not at the end. No, 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 no. Um, All right. Um, no, it was very quick. Uh-huh. With, yeah, within a couple days, he was gone. Yeah. I'm going to, was it cancer? No, it's COVID. It was COVID. I don't pick up on the COVID. I never pick up on COVID. They show me other things. He's oh. showing me, oh, wait a second. 
Did they intubate him? No, no. But he was in the hospital. Well, no. We we went and had a test, and they told him to go home. It was too full mm -hmm. at the hospital, and so we thought he'd be all right. No, we we didn't know. But he he, he was he, we went to the hospital, but mm -hmm. he couldn't stay. Because it was just too full. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if I'm confusing your your husband and your brother with the treatments. Oh, I don't know. Did your husband pass in the hospital? No. He no. passed in the house. He passed at home. The person I have passed in the hospital. So that was your brother passed in the hospital, correct? Jimmy. Jimmy passed in the hospital, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say I'm confusing the two two men. Okay. So Jimmy dies in the hospital and he has treatment, some sort of treatment, correct? Right. And whatever they did to him, he was unhappy with the treatment. Does that make sense to you? Well, he had a ruptured appendix. Uh -huh. So it was fast. It was right. an infection. Mm -hmm. it was ruptured. And they didn't know. And then they brought him. He got to the hospital. And he was there. They tried to fix him. But the. Okay. That makes sense in the sense that I'm getting poking and prodding. And he, it hurt. And whatever. Well, it hurt a lot. Hurt it hurt a lot. A lot. Okay. So I'm going to ask Jimmy to move aside, and I want to hear from your husband. Okay. Who's the C name around your husband? Charles? Cole? Chase? Charles. Who's Charles? I, I don't know why I'm laughing, you guys. This is serious stuff. Okay, let's stop. It's excruciating, right? It really is to watch these, but somebody has to watch these, and I'm glad you're here with me. We, we have to learn. This is what's going on. So when people say they had a reading, it was super accurate. This is the kind of stuff that they're talking about. But again, they usually don't record it. So was there, was there tons of testing? It seemed like a long time. Well, what does that mean to my, to my husband that I don't have, who's still unnamed, by the way? Uh, it seems like it was a long time. What is that, a week, a day? Six months, a year, six hours. Yeah, well, that's just saying what, something that didn't really make sense. Whatever they did to him, he didn't like it. Well, he's sick. <laughs> Poor guy. He's got COVID and he's really sick. It was during the height of the pandemic, right? As, as I explained, after she asked if it was cancer, and I'm like, no, <laughs> it wasn't cancer. Remember, this person does not exist. She's reading. She is reading my dead, non-existent person. All right. He didn't like it. Did he never have a sick day in his life? That's just something that's like a, a trope people throw out there. Of course, he's been sick. My poor non-existent husband has been sick multiple times and he was a big baby. And then she says he didn't like that. In other words, She's in contact with him right that second. In other words, she is. So, I mean, how is it that she is, if she's pretending um, and, and, and fooling around, how can you say that? Because if she's really believes she's speaking to dead people, how do you say a statement like that? He didn't like that. He didn't like that you called him a big baby when he was sick. So I think she knows she's faking because why else would you say that? Because she is not in contact with my dead anything. So she says she's in contact with him and she's sure until she gets to the point where she gets really confused about my brother or him. I mean, that was really silly, right? Um, she still hasn't said his name, which would probably clear a lot of things up, but no, there's no name. She thought it was something in the abdomen. Now, there's a lot of things that can happen in the abdomen, and they could kind of 
start creeping up if it's like lung cancer or heart disease or throat cancer. That's kind of close to your abdomen, I guess. Um, there's a lot, a lot that goes in there. Uh, you know, pancreas, um, uh, prostate, bladder, colon, sort of close. I mean, kind of this is the serious part. I mean, unless it's the brain, uh, this is kind of the, the area that's going to get you. What's the number one killer of men in America? Heart disease. Okay. Cancer is a big one. Uh, COVID is really high up there now, but traditionally it's been heart disease, heart disease, right? In this area. Okay. Cancer uh, is a booger. So she doesn't pick up on COVID. What do you mean you don't pick up on COVID? What the heck? Aren't you talking to my dead husband, my non-existent dead husband? Aren't you talking to him? He just said he was, he didn't like that you, I called him a big baby. So what do you mean you don't pick up on COVID? Couldn't he, couldn't he have just said, you know, it was COVID or, you know, they said it was COVID? No, of course, no. He was in the hospital and she gets all confused. Who is it was in the hospital? Was he in the hospital? He was not in the hospital. So I'm making it up. As I said, I said, well, we went to the hospital, but it was crowded and we couldn't get a, you know, couldn't get a bed. So we thought he'd be okay. So we sent, they sent him home. So all this medication he's talking about that made him ill. No, he got the medication because he was ill. Not because he was on medication and it made him ill. And that's kind of getting into that ethical part. Because she's talking about, she says, and she alludes to a, a reading that was right before with a woman who says that the, the cancer treatment, the chemo and stuff made her husband sick. Well, no kidding. I've had chemo treatment. It's It's not... Fun, but it's better than being dead. I'm alive still because of my chemo treatment. Um, and the medication isn't necessarily, well, you know, well, you guys get it. I don't have to explain that to you. So um, that's the ethical part. Part of the ethical part is that, is she trying to say to stop, if 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 the medication is is what's doing it to you, what's making you ill, should you stop the medication should you take her advice that it's the medication now of course my husband who's non-existent is dead so it's too late now but that idea of should you have treatment in the future knowing that it might be what kills you um or um you know it's 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 making it like Maybe we shouldn't trust our doctors. Maybe we shouldn't trust the diagnosis they're giving us. Maybe we shouldn't trust any of that stuff because the medium's making it sound like this is more of a problem than whatever it is they're trying to treat you for. Okay, so that's getting a little bit into the ethical area. It's going to get worse in a minute, okay? So um, uh, she says she's confused about my brother and my husband. Now, if she could just tell me my husband's name, and I'm not going to ask, but if she'd just tell me his name, that would straighten this all out, right? Tell me something about my husband so that I know that I'm talking, so I can tell which one you're talking to, because they're totally different situations. And also, you'll see that the sitter who's motivated me over explains. I give her more information trying to explain it, and that's very common and typical for a motivated sitter to over explain. And then the medium just uses the information I just gave him to, to make sense of it. What, um, if you were to ask a sitter later without a recording or anything, and you said, how much information did you give the medium? Mostly they are gonna say, I didn't tell him anything. I told him almost nothing. But really when you go back and look at the footage, if you could do that, you would find that they're giving a lot of information and that's common because we're trying to make a connection. We're trying to reach our dead loved one and we're trying very hard to um, uh, make sure she stays on the right track because what a motivated sitter is afraid of is that she's going to say, I'm not getting anything and be out of here because we're taught um, as sitters that the connection may not be always a strong connection. And sometimes we have to kind of wiggle a little bit to make that connection um, and that it could just snap like that and it'd be gone. Oh, he's gone. You know, those kinds of things. So what we want to do is we want to prolong it and, and kind of help them out and 
No, I think I think you're right. I it was a dog. Yeah, it wasn't. It was kind of a medium dog. It wasn't really a big dog, like you said. It's you know they're they're trying really hard to make the connection, so they don't want that to end. So they're willing to to forgive, to help, so that this, the situation stays. Okay, so let's go back to our video. I've forgotten where we are. Um, I think we're gonna go back to my husband again. My non-existent, unnamed, dead husband that does not happen, doesn't exist. Oh, we're going on to Charles. Now, that's interesting. Let's go to Charles. Charles. Who's um, Charles? I went to school with Charles. But okay. No, 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 that's no. Been, it's, around, uh, it's around your husband. Who's the Charles? Or the it might have been somebody he worked with. Okay. No, it's not. I want somebody like a... Um, like no, a I don't. I think he had a dog when he was a little boy named Chucky or, or something like that. Well, that'll work. That'll, that's a personal thing. Could be. Could be. Okay. And he passed in the house, your husband. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. And he was very ill, lots of coughing and he had a fever. Well, we just couldn't do anything. No, you couldn't do anything. But he knows that. Like, are you carrying around that you didn't take him to the hospital? So let me show you this a little bit before we go too much further with Charles. So I'm going to show you a very brief clip, like a minute long, of Mark Edward back in the 1990s. He's doing a TV uh, show called Exploring the Unknown and um, he's set up in a mall by a TV film crew and he's uh, the psychic and he's going to explain a little bit that's going on. I, I I'm going to share this with you because I think this is wonderful and fitting for this moment. Go have a seat. I think when people go to a psychic, they expect to see some accurate information. So over the years, I've made my own little collection of uh, uh, phrases that seem to fit. One of them is, why do I pick up Charles? Who's Charles? An older guy that lives across from me. I'm getting the name, like, Charles. I had an Uncle Charlie. Um, Uncle Charlie? Yeah. Who's Charles? My husband. If it hits, fine. If it doesn't... Where do I hear the name Joseph? Very strong Joseph. You just tell the person, watch for it. No. Just think about it, okay? Joseph George, sometimes I'll hear a like, but you'll, you'll check. To Mark Edward, this special knowledge is just knowing how to pull off a convincing con. It's entertainment. I'm not a real psychic. Oh my God. Wow, that's, 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 that's really weird. Hey, well, how did you come up with the names and things? I always say Charles. Oh. And as long as it is entertainment and it is put in those terms, I see nothing wrong with it. I'm not really a psychic. You're not really? No. Are you kidding? No. Cool. Uh, I can't think of Charles without that. Did you see he also came up with George and some of the other things? I just love that stuff. So <laughs> that woman was so disappointed that she didn't get her husband named Charles. Oh, you always say Charles. Oh, <laughs> poor thing. Sorry. Sorry to ruin your illusions. I'm sure she still believes. Anyway. Okay. Sorry to derail that but i miss my mark so much guys been just over two months okay so let's continue with um um my non-existent dead husband who's still unnamed um <laughs> she wants to know if i took him to the hospital even though i've already told her i've taken him to the hospital and they sent him home so i guess she's tired now I mean, how do you do three hours of readings? Oh, my gosh. Chucky or, or something like that. Well, that'll work. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. That's a personal thing. Could be. Could be. Okay. And he passed in the house, your husband. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. And he was very um, ill. Lots of coughing and he had a fever. Well, we just couldn't do anything. No, you couldn't do anything. 
that he knows that. Like, are you carrying around that you didn't take him to the hospital? Um, because you know that took him to the hospital. That's what he's saying. You know, you tried. You, yes, but they you couldn't. Tried. We thought he'd be all right. They didn't have a bed, and the and the and the the whole place was full. Mm -hmm. So there, they had nowhere to take him, and we just they said just take him home. We thought he'd be all right, but it just happened so fast. Mm -hmm. Did he have high blood pressure? Well, um, showing me high blood pressure. Not. He was pretty physical fit. He he did a lot of exercise. He was very very good. No, no, I don't know. High blood pressure, no. He's showing me circulatory. He's showing me circulatory. That's and I'm interesting. Yeah. Huh. And I'm feeling like there was something else going on behind the COVID. Do you understand that? Well, um, maybe. I don't. I Maybe something I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know he didn't tell me everything. Mm -hmm. He had aches and pains like we all do. So maybe he had some kind of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't really know. Maybe, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Phyllis, I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, you'll never know because COVID is like a closed book in our, in our history. In other words, all those people died and, we're not quite sure of what they died of because some people get COVID and nothing happens and other people got COVID and they passed away. But every person I've spoken to from the other side that had COVID tells me there were complications. There was other stuff going on that it wasn't just the COVID. It could have been septicemia. It could have been, you know, it could have been something, but it blew up. Do you understand that? Okay. And that there was nothing you could have done. Oh no, it was really fast, very fast. Do you have two children? Oh, okay. So is she denying COVID or I, I don't quite understand what she's talking about here. Well, does he have high blood pressure? That's pretty typical for most males in Western um, society. Uh, but uh, I couldn't make up my mind if he had it or not. I wanted to see what she said. Um, oh, I like the part about the dog, Chucky. He had a dog when he was little. And I think the dog's name was Chucky. And she says, oh, well, that's that'll work. <laughs> yeah, I bet it'll work when you're trying to get a hit. Oh, and that's a personal thing. Well, you, I said it, not you. You just want to know who Charles was. Okay. He's showing me. So they, she says that a lot. He's showing me. Um, he's showing me this. He's showing me that. Why are we talking about a circulatory system on him? Why doesn't he tell me about like his memories of me or he is uh, our time together or our honeymoon or, you know, the, the holding the baby, um, you know, for the first time or memories of, you know, some really good memory or some special times. Or maybe he should tell me, um, I know you're starting to see that guy who lives next door and I don't like it, or I think he's shady, or maybe some advice like, I know you're trying to figure out what to do with the insurance money and I think you should be investing at this. I mean, why doesn't he tell me something helpful or like, where is the remote control? I cannot find it since you've done it. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Why don't you tell me something I can use? Why are you telling, he's see showing me something about the circulatory system in him. Well, I'm not a medical person. What about it? <laughs> yes, you had blood running through your body. That's wonderful. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate it. And what in the heck is she talking about? COVID is a closed book. We will never really understand it. COVID, nothing oh, happens. Is that what I wrote here? Something about complications. It's always something else that kills you, not the COVID. And we'll never really know. What the heck is she talking about? Why is she giving anything that has to do with medical advice at all? 
She is a freaking psychic medium and she's not even a very good one. So why is she telling us this? Do you think the dead only want to talk to people about like their last moments and what it was like? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Okay. We're halfway through. Bear with me, y'all. I did this multiple times. You could do it too. <laughs> no, we have three. But are there two that are the same and one is different? You mean like twins? No, like two boys and one girl or or two are close and one isn't? No, not really. They're all three just different people from each other, but and okay. they're they're not they're not close close in age or anything like that. All right. And was one child in the house when this happened? No. No, no, they were none of the kids came there? Well, it was it just took a couple of days. We had COVID, so nobody was allowed to come in the house. He's talking about do you have a son? Is there yes. one son that would have because he's talking about one son. Is there one son that has the same name as him? No. I don't know why he's referring to one son, but he's talking about one son in particular. Which one? I don't know. I don't know, but he's talking about one son. Is there one son that he was closest to? Well, not really. He had a great relationship with both of them. Okay, so for you different have, reasons. For different reasons, but you have two boys and one girl, correct? Yes. Which is what I was asking you before. You have two that are the same and one that's different, correct? Well, my girl is a bit of a tomboy, so. Okay, but she's still a girl. She's she's different. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. He's bringing up Christmas, so I want to ask: Did he pass around? Okay, we're about to get to Christmas, and I want to stop before we get to Christmas because I think it's hilarious. So, <laughs> children. Oh, okay. Do you have two children? You're the psychic, don't you know? Can you give me the names of them, Lady Phyllis, if you're so amazing? No, no names. <laughs> Do you have two that are the same and one that's different? What does that even mean? Okay. And again, with the close, does that mean close in age, close in relationship, living close? Close, what do you mean? Uh, was one child in the house? Well, don't you know? Why are you asking so many questions, Lady Phyllis? Uh, why didn't they visit? She kind of was like, well, didn't one come to visit before he died? She makes it sound like it's like, well, why wouldn't one come visit? Is she not forgetting the times of COVID? I don't know what she was living through during COVID in, the, in that era. But in my household, we were locked down. Mark Edward and I, we didn't go anywhere and nobody came into our house. It was no mm -mm. we didn't have people visiting i had just like a couple people that i trusted and they were the only ones who was allowed to associate with us and in their little bubble it was just us so it was like very closed down and that's how we did it here in california i don't know where she's living and what her lifestyle was like but it was a lockdown household um and until we could get vaccinated and then things changed but up until then we were very careful. I was the only one that went to the grocery store and I went in and I was out quickly and we were always masked, very careful. So, um, uh, you know, kids coming to visit when the, when the dad's sick with COVID, why would you bring your child in to visit with dad who's dying of COVID before a time when we could get vaccinated? What I want to kill my kid, right? Okay. Well, maybe in her household, but not in my household. Okay. Sorry, I love my kids that much. Um, I'm, I, no way am I going to let them do that. Even if I was on my dying dead bed, I am not going to allow my kids to come see me when I have a contagious disease that I could give them. And it, there was the hospitals were overwhelmed and there was no way you could be, you, you know, you just couldn't get in. So anyway, that's my personal experience. And it kind of pisses me off that she was, she had this kind of flippant attitude that why didn't your son come visit as your husband was dying? Um, and then this thing, 
did she have a son he was named for, which is very common, right? Very common to have a junior or at least a, a, a middle name or, or something of the sort or a nickname. Uh, and you like how I threw in there, which son? And she's like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, you don't know because you ain't psychic. And I don't have two sons. Well, I do have two sons, but I don't have my, I'm not, none of the scenarios is, is correct. Okay. So uh, um, are two the same and one is different. So she gets out of me that two are male because I said, which son? So now she knows I have two sons. See how she picked up on that really quick. So two are the same. And one is different because I, she says, you have two boys and one girl. And I'm like, well, yeah. And she says, oh, see, so you have two that are the same and one is different. And I'm like, oh, well, my daughter's a tomboy. So, oh, no, no, she's still a girl. It's like, I didn't want to get into anything else. You know, I could have gotten into, I don't, I could have embellished a little bit, but I didn't bother because I, I was, <laughs> I was already over it at this point. But, but do you see how that works? You don't know their names. Why don't you just tell me, Phyllis, you're talking to my husband, my non-existent dead husband. You're talking to him about my children that I don't have, not these children. Why don't you just say, you know, Joey and Sue and, and Brenda or whatever their names are. And he's talking about him. He has a message for them. And why is he trying to pit my kids against each other? He's closer to one than he is to the others. It's like, Wait a minute now. Come on now. That's not nice. When we end this reading and I would be able to go home to my kids and say, I had a reading and dad came through and he wants to know that he loves you better than the other two. <laughs> you guys, not so much. Him, yeah, he was closer to to this unnamed child that it doesn't exist. And, and he has a message for you, but dad didn't have anything to say with you two. <laughs> I mean, how cruel is that? I mean, really? Is that is that what goes on in these world of the psychic mediums? Absolutely, totally. This is exactly what happens. This is exactly what they do all the time. I've heard this kind of stuff all the time. Oh yeah, well, there was one sister he was she was closer to, and or you were the favorite because you're here on the call with me. All right, Christmas. Okay, I'm really getting giggly at this point. Not now, but at the time, I know I am now, but at the point <laughs> that we're at now, I'm getting really silly. Christmas time? Uh, around, it was, it was in January. All right, so it was right after Christmas. And yeah, but at the end, at the end. At the end of January, but it was, it was like after Christmas, because he's bringing up Christmas. Was there something that's significant that stands out about this last Christmas that you had together? Uh, no, it, it it was a nice Christmas, and the he kids were all there. Yeah, he it was a, it was a big holiday for him. And were the kids there for you? Oh yes, all three. Okay, so he wants you to hold on to that memory, mm -hmm. and hold on I to the photos, group. lots of photos. Yeah, right. He doesn't want you focusing on his last few days. Do you understand that? Okay, sure. Those are the memories that he wants you to remember. He wants you to, it, it, the circumstances of his death were traumatic for you. And he wants you to concentrate on the good times and not think about the, you know, those last few days that he had. Mm -hmm. He said, you tried everything. You tried very hard. Well, I was quite sick too. Mm -hmm. So I... I might have been able to do more if I wasn't. That's what he want, don't want you to avoid. Don't go there. Okay. Don't go there. You did everything you could, yeah. Jean. I, I just, I, oh, I was sick as a dog. It right. was so awful. Right. I couldn't breathe. And, but he was sicker than I was, and he went fast. He wants you to understand that if someone had to go, he couldn't have coped if it was the other way around. Do you understand that? Sure. Yeah, that sounds he, like him. Yeah. He loves you so much. He said he could not have managed if you were the one who passed. Well, that's true. He had so many problems with the remote control and where the passwords were. and, and No, not for, that, not for those reasons. It's because he loves you so much. 
Okay. He couldn't have lived without you. Do you understand that? That's very sweet. That sounds like him. Yeah. Well, he's the same person he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, this is so nice. This is so wonderful to be able to talk to him. Oh well, goodness. he talks to you all the time. So, okay. What's, what's the deal with poinsettias with him? Did he love poinsettias? He always said, don't let the dog get near the poinsettias. <laughs> They're going to eat it and it's going to kill him. Okay. Cause he's showing me poinsettias and he says, bring up the poinsettias to Keep my wife. Keep the dog away from the poinsettia. That's what he okay, used to say. Put it on the yeah. table so the dog can't get to the, can't get to the plant. So he, he's the same way. So watch out for those poinsettias, but he does love them because Christmas is special to him. Okay. That makes sense. Now he was a veteran too. My husband. Oh my God, you guys, that makes me laugh so hard. Okay, so was it around Christmas? What's this about Christmas? Well, uh, I guess he, she knows I'm a, I'm a, from a Christian faith. I guess she would have to assume that because what if I was Jewish and he mis mentioned Christmas <laughs> or some other um, ethnicity or religion that does not celebrate Christmas? So she got that right. <laughs> We do like our Christmas down here at Catnip Corners. Okay. And I said it's January because that was kind of the height of the beginning of the uh, COVID epidemic. That's where I was going to January of what, 2021. Was that 2021? Gosh, I've already forgotten now. Uh, January, a lot of people were dying. We didn't have vaccines available at that point yet. And um, the hospitals were getting pretty darn full. So I said at the end of January, and she's like still trying to make it sound like, well, yeah, that's near Christmas. What do you consider near Christmas? Is November 1st near Christmas? Is January 31st near Christmas? Well, that's an awful lot of, well, there's only 12 months and you've just said two of those months are near Christmas. I wonder if she would have said October or February was also near Christmas, but maybe. I'm sure she would have. Were the kids there at Christmas? And I just said, yeah, okay. All three of them. And then she goes in again with the platitudes, hold on to the memories. He wants you to remember the good times. And was there something more significant about this Christmas than last Christmases or past? And I'm like, well, no, it really was a nice Christmas, but we have lots of photographs. He's hold on to the memories. Remember those good times. And then he goes on, you tried everything. I tried everything to keep my non-existent dead unnamed husband alive. And if anybody had to go, it was him. He's so noble, this non-existent dead husband of mine. Uh, <laughs> he loves you so very much. Oh, ah, things I'd want to hear. Uh, and he watches over me. And that creeps me out because, right, now we don't know how old Joanne is, but we assume she's probably in her 60s, about the age I am now. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not, I'm not near dead. I, I've got decades left to go and I may end up having another relationship or maybe two more relationships in my life I I don't I don't know I have no idea I'm not psychic I don't know these things um and um the idea that this was kind of your and psychics do this a lot that this is your one true love and and that they're watching over you and checking in on you and that kind of keeps you fixed it keeps you kind of in your in your spot uh some psychics will even say don't get rid of his clothes or keep those shoes under the bed his shoes under the bed or make sure you don't get rid of his hat the thing don't change a lot of things because they want you to stay in grief and in this moment because this is how they make their money this is how they get more readings this is how they keep you in this little spot where you are not able to move on now if you go to a licensed grief therapist they're going to give you help you with coping methods to move on with your life to acknowledge that you loved your spouse or your partner or whatever and that how to cope they teach you how to you know the warning signs to look for to be able to um uh, make it so that you can see when you're about to have you know fall into this trap of staying in the, in the past, staying where you are, just staying put. 
and they want you to move on. But when they tell you these things like, oh, he's always looking over you, he loves you and all that kind of stuff, it makes it more difficult for you to someday move on or move out of the location you're in or move on with other relationships. It's difficult to do that if you think they're watching you. I mean, think about that. You, How are you able to have lasting, meaningful relationships with future people if you think that your dead husband is like what? Got a nanny cam on you or something and watching you? It's creepy and it's not health, healthy. It's not helpful. And it certainly is not entertainment. So I bring up the remote and the passwords. That's kind of me. <laughs> That's my kind of humor. Oh, he, you know, he's very sweet. He's just the same person he was on the other side. But he, what is his name? Lady Phyllis, you haven't even mentioned his name yet. Okay. He talks to me all the time. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Now the poinsettias. <laughs> she's mentioning poinsettias because it's Christmas time, right? That's what she's trying to go with. Christmas is one of his favorite holidays. And... <laughs> I mean, I could have been cruel and said, no, he hated Christmas. His mother mother died on Christmas and in a car accident. And it was very brutal and he hated Christmas. I could have said that, but no, I didn't go there because at this point I'm very tired. And um, <laughs> she just doesn't seem to want to end this reading that she's giving me. Most of the readings she gave her like 10 minutes long. So she's up to 20 something minutes from, you know, me at this point, we're at 15 minutes. And I was like, is this ever going to end? But um, <laughs> I've heard this recording dozens of times and I still crack up every time she brings up poinsettias and I bring up the keep the dog away from the poinsettias because I can remember my parents talking about it or, or I've, it's like a, a memory somewhere that you don't want to have the pets around a poinsettia plant because they eat the leaves they're poisonous and that I think it was like a public service announcement that would be on tv around christmas season um and that you wanted to keep the plant away from the animal you know and make sure that you're careful this year don't you know don't like put lights on your tree that might actually cause the tree to catch on fire and don't put poinsettias where the animals can get to it because they'll die anyway i remember that from somewhere in my consciousness and <laughs> keep them away from the pets so she mentions, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it. <laughs> She's kind of laughing. I wonder if she realizes at this point that she knows it's kind of BS. Um, <laughs> I'm cracking up inside. And the people who are listening to this on um, the social where I'm, I'm, I'm um, live streaming this video to, they're watching it in real time and they're laughing. They're not in the same room as I am, but they're, I can see they're, content the chat they're they're making and they're laughing they're like what the heck is this isn't talking about poinsettias on the table and dogs and anyway i laughed and laughed okay so at this point i'm a i'm really kind of like i want to end this but now going back to the ethical i want to know uh, now mark always mark edward always said you don't give financial advice you don't give medical advice and you don't give legal advice those are off don't ever do that as a psychic. Okay. That is that, that can get you in serious trouble if you do those things. So um, we're in a more private reading. There's, I think there's eight of us. It's, it's um, Lady Phyllis, Tracy, who's the helper, Thomas John's old helper. And there's eight of us, I think. I think it's eight, maybe it's 10. It's, it's a limited amount of people. Now, what I'm finding is I do these kinds of investigations into readings that are intimate like this in in the room like this is that they're more likely to give to break those rules financial legal or um, medical because they think they're in a safe space now i recorded this video but what you're looking at right now is the video that lady phyllis sent me because they recorded it and that was part of the agreement i paid my money i paid money for this and she uh, emailed me the recording later. So she gave me this. So not only did she give me my reading, but she gave me the reading of all the people who were all attended. They just give you the whole thing. So, you know, this privacy stuff is kind of silly. 
when she's giving me everybody's readings and um she's she's um um what you call she's she's giving me this kind of thing and everybody's able to listen in well we could we could listen in anybody could share the reading with whomever they wanted to share it with right of course they can i mean there's nothing they didn't come with any caveats um that i couldn't share the reading so at this point everybody's probably kind of listening in but i want to know if she's going to give medical advice or financial advice or legal advice now i already know she gave financial advice because i was there's a reading that's kind of before this and it'll be later and you'll see them giving see how she's giving these other um, financial legal medical stuff so i want to get on record that she's going to give me medical advice so i pulled up a story that had happened during operation bumblebee which was chip coffee and back in 2013 when i started doing these psychic stings and chip coffee um the woman right directly in front of me, it was a live audience and I have it all recorded, but she says, she asks this question, this medical question and, and um, Chip Coffee gave her an answer. And I'm going to ask her the same kind of question. I just changed it a little bit um, to, you know, uh, a sister and, and so on. So I want to see if she's going to answer it because I know I'm filming and I want to see if we catch her. Let's see if we catch her. What do you think? Husband? No. Who was the veteran? Because uh, that was your brother, because they're showing me the triangular flag. Yeah, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. That's Jimmy. And did Jimmy have a military funeral? Well, um, I didn't get back there for it, but from the pictures I saw, no, I didn't think they did bother because it was during that time when everybody, there were so many deaths that the we just oh. couldn't keep up the... You know. Right. Okay. Hold on a second. With your husband, did you not have a funeral because of COVID? No, we didn't. We just had a, we right. had a event and I didn't know about Zoom at that time. Right. And I just didn't know how to do that real well. But the funeral service had a very small place where you could have just a few friends and family come in. Just, I think we had four or five people. That was it. It was he very, very small. Know, he's bringing that up and he's saying that was enough. And if you're thinking that you didn't do something bigger or you didn't do enough, he wants you to also let go of that. He was satisfied. It was small. It was intimate. He was not a showy guy. Right, right. So he says it was just perfect. Do you understand oh, that? That's wonderful to know. Okay. So he was very happy with the way you did it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Can I, can I ask you quick about my yes. sister? Sure. She has been on the transplant list for a lung for oh so long it's been a long time and she is in kentucky and she has been on the list so long that we have been told that maybe she should move and go to texas and get on the transplant list there where she will have a better chance at getting a lung transplant now do you what do you see if they're suggesting she do that, then you should listen to the, I mean, like, it's a crapshoot because where someone goes that, you know, where someone dies with a, with a matching lung, that's where she has to be. Do you understand? Yeah. Well, the doctor isn't saying that, but other people who have in the, in that we know that have had to go through transplants have said that they sh think that we would have better chance of her getting her transplant if she goes to texas instead of in staying in kentucky so the doctor doesn't say that so i don't know what to think my sister she's asked me and i prayed over it and i i just don't have a good answer for her but it's it's but she's been on it for so long i just don't know how to help her 
I, you know what, I can't give an answer to that because it all depends where the lung comes up. You know, there could be an accident on the I-95 in Kentucky and she's there. it's just going to be a matter of being in the right place at the right time. If she goes to Texas, there may be a lot more people, like she, she there may be more people and it'll be more competition for it. Do you understand? Right. So it's, it's just going to be that she's just got to be at the right place at the right time. And if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But what I do get is um, when you first started talking, to me it sounded like a good idea because I like the idea of moving. But then another part of me, I saw that big caution, which is there are less people in Kentucky and she has a better shot in Kentucky. So it's just going to be the luck of the draw. Wherever she is, that's where it's going to happen. Okay. Well, you don't see that when. No, I don't see when. But, but where, I. Where would be she's beginning? Her, what, I, I just don't know how to tell her. She asked me and I just don't know. I pray. You tell her what you should tell her is she has to follow. She should ask whoever, your father, your mother, whoever's on the other side. And whatever answer she gets in her head, that's what she should do. She has to follow her own gut. This is something that you can't tell her what to do because if you tell her to go and then something comes up in Kentucky, you know, she's right. ruined her chances. It's, it's, it's kind of like she has, this is a decision only she can make or her family can make. Okay. Well, that. You I, can't make that decision. Right. She, she just is just worried. It's like I am. We all are so worried about her. And, you know, she's been on the list for so long. Yeah. Just and that's just the beginning of the struggle. When you get a transplant, it's a very hard, right. uh, it's a very hard life. You, you have to watch out. Um, I'm wondering if the transplant was what I was, you know, I was picking up on a liver, but okay. this is lungs. So I don't know what I was picking up on with liver, but it, okay. I still have an image of liver. Um, and I see like yellow skin. So I don't know if you had somebody who had, who died of liver failure. Not to my reckoning. Mm -hmm. not, not that I know. Um, no, unless it's somebody I didn't know well. Yeah. It could be a grandparent or something. Yeah. You know, I don't know the wall. Yeah. And um, somebody I didn't know well. I I'm sorry for your loss with your husband, but he, he says he wants you to know that once he got over to the other side, he felt better. Okay. Well, that's great to hear. Thank and you so much, Phil. I, I really appreciate it. It's the first time I've had a reading by you, and I'm, I'm so glad that I, 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 I was able to reach get my husband. And he's together with Jimmy. Like they are together. That's very want, nice. Uh, I hope they're playing cards or something over there with the... <laughs> They're, having, they're raising some hell over there. Let me oh, tell. well, that's good to hear. That's very good. But thank you so much. I, okay. I need to get off the call because it's a little late for me. So okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. No problem. Peace be to you. You too. You too. All right, Joanne, we're going to read you next. Is there a Oh, my God, you guys. <laughs> it's been a couple months since I've listened to this, at least this far. Um, <laughs> what did you think? I hope you leave me comments. I hope you made it this far. She keeps asking questions. Did he have a military funeral? Did Jimmy have, who? Jimmy? Yeah, Jimmy. Uh, then she says, did you have a funeral? Okay, I said, no, we didn't have a funeral. She goes, yeah, because that's, and she starts, I said, but... It was actually a small funeral, about four of us. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what he's telling me. So it's like, that is a funeral, right? Four people is a funeral, even though it's not a funeral funeral with a lot. He's 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 saying that it was um, okay because he was not a showy kind of guy. He was okay. So why are you telling me that? Okay, whatever. He's <laughs> lung transplant. I don't have any family in Kentucky that I know of. Or Texas, by the way. And I, my sister does not need a lung transplant. No one I know needs a lung transplant or any other kind of transplant that I have ever heard of or know of. And I don't pray. So I don't know 
how she couldn't see any of that. But she just went with it because she's not psychic. Okay. Um, I was very clear. Now you tell me, does this sound like medical advice or not? She's not telling me what to do. And now if she is the psychic that she says she is, she's talking to all my family members and knows about the dog and, and poinsettias and all that kind of stuff. Shouldn't she be able to tell me, I see your sister is living in Texas and she's going to lead a healthier life? No, she can't tell me that. She can only tell me about things in the past. Oh, I don't know about that. So she should be able to tell me what's the right place. Well, she keeps going on. No, oh, I can't tell you because it's just going to depend on where you're at. It'll, In other words, she says it'll happen. It'll happen where she's meant to be. So in other words, she's saying it's going to happen. Um, but what she decides is that she need my sister needs to reach out to dad or mom or whomever, and, and they're going to tell her what to do. So she doesn't say, listen to the doctor who is obviously saying, I'm, I'm very clear. The doctors are not saying this is a good idea. I'm saying that the, that she wants to do this and we think we should, maybe she should do this. We're not sure. So, um. She should follow her head and she should follow the instincts. What about your doctor's advice, lady? Okay. And then she starts talking about, oh, it's a hard life when you have a lung transplant. Well, you know, it's probably a lot better than dying of not having a tr lung transplant. Anyway. And then she says, well, maybe I get confused about this transplant with the liver because I'm still seeing yellow skin and, and oh, just talking about this. I'm exhausted. I can't even imagine. Oh, imagine being three hours of this. Who can it be that needs the lung transplant or the transplant of some sort? Well, I wonder who that could possibly be. He felt better on the other side. Now he's dead. He feels better. What the heck? He's with, he's with Jimmy. Who else is he with? Lady Phyllis, who else? Can you name a few other people? What's his wife? What's what's um his parents' name? What's uh, my mom and dad's names? Anything? Anything? Messages for the kids? Grandkids? I don't have any grandkids. He's with Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> They're playing. They're raising hell over on the other side. So this is, it. they say they're giving us comfort, right? They say that they, they do this to give us comfort. I'm not so sure that's comforting to have somebody lying to you. It's come right out. This is lying. There's, there's no other way. I None of this could possibly be true. And she's confident. So is this ethical? I don't think it's ethical. And wait till you see some of the other recordings that I've got. I don't think it's ethical at all. And let's point out the obvious. I am not Joanne. I am definitely not a believer. I am not there to, none of what I said was true. I have children. That's about the only thing that I said was true, that was true. I have a brother. None of the other stuff applies to him. The other thing, I am Susan Gerbeck. I am one of the biggest detractors of psychic mediums like herself, these Greek vampires and Thomas John who trained her, who she's still associated with, who endorses her. I'm his biggest critic. So how did she not pick up on any of that, that everything I was saying was a lie. I was lying. I was making it up. Well, actually I wasn't lying so much she was telling me stuff and I was just agreeing. If you want to call that lying, okay. But none of it was true. And I am Susan Gerbic and she is having a conversation with me over Zoom. And for the last two hours, she's been having conversations with people. And she says, I can do this. This is fine. I'm doing it. This is, this is how I do it. She's having no problems other than maybe some weird things like not sure who had the lung and who had the liver and yellow skin and i mean she says she's in contact with my dad my husband 
my brother, whatever. So why is it that she can't tell who I am and that I am here? Maybe she wouldn't have said, oh, it's Susan Gerbic I'm talking to. But maybe she should have said, this is a person who's here fraudulently pretending to be somebody else. How is any of her abilities of even, I mean, the basics of, of psychicness, how could she not pick up on, I am there to sting her. I am there to catch her. And that there are a whole bunch of people who are watching this live as I'm live streaming this to a different private place. She doesn't know anything about those people or feeling anything like that. She never once says to me, I think that you use another name or that something's wrong with you. You're, you're, the person you're presenting is not who you are. Plus, I paid for this with money given to me by James the Amazing Randy who is one of the most notorious um, investigators of psychic mediums in the last, since Houdini. Now he died in 2010, I believe. Or was it 2010? Good Lord. No, it couldn't have been 2010. He died in 2000, before the pandemic. No, during the pandemic. He died in 2020. God, time just is... And I miss him all the time. And James Randy gave me the funds to be able to do this kind of investigations. And yeah, and I still take donations. And there is a donation uh, link on the abouttimeproject.org site if you'd like to donate to help continue this kind of investigations. Um, but I paid for this and the other person who attended with James Randi's money. So you would think that she would have picked up on that, but she doesn't. She didn't have to say it was James Randi, but she could have felt some presence that was whatever. You know, any of that should have been like, if you believe in karma or juju or whatever, why didn't she catch anything and she doesn't because she's not psychic so anyway i hope you enjoyed this oh my gosh that is a long video i'm tired but i have to start coming out with these videos and i think the other videos will be a lot shorter because the readings are also shorter but this one was the first one the introduction into what's going on and um I hope you enjoy it and share it, like it, comment, um, please subscribe and please um, watch for the other videos for Operation Dill Pickle and the article that will probably be coming out. I publish for skepticalinquired.org and you can find all my articles there by, um, there's a little search bar you can put in Susan Gerbic and find all my articles or you can go to my website about time project.org which i try to put videos um, um articles up on there but they get to be um coming out too often i have a new one out today on tyler henry was he hot reading or cold reading anyway lady phyllis i think we got your number and i've got a bunch more videos to come out that prove we have your number hey thomas john you trained her well not <laughs>